Welcome all. It's my pleasure today to be joined by Vache Sahakian, Professor of Theoretical Physics at the Harvey Mack College. So, Professor Sahakian, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting. So, I want to discuss this Armenian Society of Fellows conference, which ju just took place in Dilijan. Uh, the first conference took place in Venice, so this was the second conference. And it is a gathering of some of the best Armenian minds and professionals from around the world, from Armenia, but also a whole swathe of countries. Um, it brought together people from various prominent universities, research, in research institutions and other institutions. So before we get into the conference that just took place, the Armenian Society of Fellows, how would you explain it in layman's terms? What is this initiative all about and what is it trying to achieve? Yes, so it is, uh, uh, as you said, a network, an international network of scholars, of specialists, uh, about 80% of them from outside Armenia. Uh, roughly the same proportion are uh, from universities and research centers around the world. Uh, and, and it's basically a forum to bring together some of the sort of experts that we have from around the world and from Armenia to start thinking about how we can help Armenia transform itself into uh, a significant presence internationally uh, in terms of uh, scholarship, research, and education. Mm -hmm. We sort of feel that <clears throat> there are short-term needs the country has, but there are also long-term needs over 10 to 20 years that strengthen the institutions of the nation. And these long-term needs require investment in people, in expertise. So unlike many other organizations, the society is really about bringing to Armenia uh, human resources, expertise and networking from outside, as opposed to you know, the usual, which is typically funding or, or uh, initiatives which basically invest. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, we're investing in people. Mm -hmm. And as I understood that um, the attendees, the fellows, were put into various task forces or cores which they were grouped according to, I mean, people who were in a similar field, as, as I understood. And each uh, task force or core was, was trying to find some, a, a concrete step that w which could be taken. And I heard various ideas. I was also in Dilijan. I mean, can you explain this concept and, and what these various groups, if they came up with any, any steps that they would like to take, for example, some examples perhaps you could give? Yes, correct. So the governance structure of <clears throat> the society is very horizontal. So uh, its members uh, can uh, organically form groups through the network uh, with people who share uh, certain uh, uh, concerns or certain projects in mind to realize in Armenia. And uh, we call these task forces. They typically involve uh, a core team of uh, five to ten people and another uh, team of uh, advisors from the network, which is usually larger, 10 to 20. Mm -hmm. And typically the task force <clears throat> focus on a specific direction, which is within the expertise of the group. And they meet often remotely, given the international nature of the organization, to develop project proposals for particular areas of concern. And, and then they go through a process of uh, using the advisory pool to refine the project proposal. And on a yearly basis, uh, the society comes together to meet each other, and at least task forces can choose to present their, their projects. And then the idea is that then we use the collective to sort of uh, provide first feedback on these proposals and then help pitch them to foundations, international organizations, benefactors, so that they can be funded and be realized. So the starting point is, is uh, uh, the, the, the idea, the expertise, and the dream of realizing a transformative project. Typically, these are projects which are meant to uh, 
scale up over 10 to 20 years into major international operations. So, so that's sort of the, the scheme that is, uh, most of the members have chosen to use. Uh, there is also a parallel uh, mode of operation which other groups have adopted, we, where uh, groups form, invite members from outside ASAF, and they uh, under, undergo a certain pilot program or a research project which produces a result that is presented at the conference. So between those two modes of operations, in the first category, uh, task forces have come up with, I think at this point, 15 projects to be realized in Armenia, uh, of which four of them have moved now to implementation phase. So, um, so I'll briefly describe each of the four. One is on <clears throat> establishing a center for ethics in public policy, which would be hosted at the American University of Armenia. And this project is led by uh, Maria Bagramian, professor of philosophy from Dublin, Paul Borosian from New York, and uh, several other people. Uh, so this project uh, would likely kick off in the next six months. Mm. Uh, the second uh, proposal is from a large team of uh, specialists in engineering and robotics and would establish a center of uh, robotics uh, which, which is uh, sort of hosted currently at Polytechnic, but uh, we, will, we will sort of continue discussions. Uh, the model of all these are, these centers are independent entities that spin off from ASAF, so they're not owned by the ASAF organization. They, they are led by a board of international scholars who basically administer the operations which involves research and education component, as well as bringing grants from outside. So, so the Center for Robotics currently uh, is, is uh, in fact, this week we will register the nonprofit organization uh, and, and it is actually part of a, a bigger set of projects that we heard in Dilijan, which include artificial intelligence, bioinformatics, and, and uh, what, what uh, the presenter called uh, Ivan Abrahamian intelligent chemistry and it would also have components in imaging and wireless technologies. So, so we don't have a name yet for this uh, sort of umbrella structure, but it basically would target uh, you know, areas of intelligent computing and engineering. Uh, so, so this would be a project that parts of it are already funded and would launch by uh, mid next year. Uh, but it has other components, as I mentioned, that will come in in time as add-ons over the next few uh, years. Um, the last thing is, as an example of the second type of operation, uh, having to do with basically the organization functioning a little bit like a think tank, producing uh, you know, opinion reports or, or research output. So we focused uh, last year on education. So we developed two uh, reports on uh, the state of primary secondary education in Armenia and the state of higher education. Uh, the reason being that all these research centers are part, part of a pipeline. So what we want to do is initially bring expertise from outside to seed these research operations with international networking, but then eventually the success would be when the uh, local talent participates in these operations five to 10 years down the road. And some can participate, of course, right away, but the capacity building will take some time. Okay, so it was two conferences so far and already four projects are, have moved to the implementation Correct. stage. I, I imagine in the future, um, you and your colleagues would like to see even more and perhaps of future conferences as well. Every uh, year our bylaws dictate that every year we have to hold a conference in June, which brings all the membership together. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the focal point of organizing our thoughts and sort of deciding 
which proposals we need to push forward for realization. So at this stage, I would say the target is to have every year maybe a couple of major transformative projects seeded and maybe a couple of smaller pilot programs that, uh, that, that sort of set the stage for future development. So we plan to do this for 20 years. The organization bylaws dictate that ASAF will dissolve itself in 20 years because it's meant to be uh, an, uh, a national project of transformation. And when we get there, either we succeeded or didn't, either case, there's no reason to continue as an organization. Okay, well, Professor Sarkian, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure, thank you. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet. Thank <laughs> you.